So you alluded to it earlier, but let's talk a little bit about high intensity interval training. Um, it's getting a lot of attention today, obviously. Um, you know, most people are familiar with what a Tabata is, though Tabata himself is not the guy that actually designed the the protocol, but everybody still refers to it by his name. Um, so where do you think this fits into the hierarchy of, uh, again, not a specific athlete who's, you know, training to run the mile or the marathon, uh, but a person who's trying to be healthy, uh, how much of a, how much of a shortcut efficiency gain is it? Um, again, let's, let's use the Tabata interval as an example where you're going all out for 20 seconds, resting for 10 and repeating it eight times. And by the way, wouldn't we argue from your research and endure that you can't technically go all out for 20 seconds that you're, <laughs> you're, you're really, st I've started when I do all out intervals, I now limit them to 10 seconds. Cause I How actually started paying attention and realizing I was subconsciously pacing myself at 20 second all outs. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's, I don't know what you think about that, um, that, that idea, but I remember reading in your book that, that wasn't it the case that we technically can't go all out for 20 seconds. It certainly doesn't seem that way. And, you know, like, look, Usain Bolt or world-class sprinters don't go as fast. I mean, it's, it's complicated by the curve, yep. but they go, they, they, don't, they don't set world records en route to 200 meters. Yeah. They're, they're pacing themselves even for 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, I just have to tell one quick story about Tabata. Please. I, uh, I, was, at, I was at a conference uh, and at the, at the poster session where the researchers are in front of their posters talking about it. And I was, it was a research on the, uh, from the McMaster group, which has p popularized, yep. uh, high intensity in interval training. And one of the postdocs was there explaining his interval, high intensity interval training research. And someone came up and, and asked him a question and hand, and handed him his business card at the time. And I, I noticed the postdoc, he looked down as he was answering the question, he glanced down at the business card and his eyebrows just went like halfway up his forehead. And I peeked over and was like, oh, that's Tabata. That's cool. I didn't realize this was a real person. <laughs> so he was he was there, uh, you know, asking questions about intervals. Anyway, um, where do I think intervals fit? Um, I think they're super important. When when ta circa 2008, when high intensity intervals started to be a, a big buzzword, I was like, how is this a buzzword? That's how runners train. Like, one of the studies out of the McMaster group was like, let's do 10 times a minute. It's like, that's the Roger Bannister. That's what he, that's how he broke the four minute mile in 1954. What, what's new about this? But it was new to a lot of people. A lot of people were like, I need to go 45 minutes. I need to go an hour. I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, so there, there is, let me put it this way. Well, I guess what I was really getting one, is, is yeah. the is the compression of that, right? It's the, I don't know if you saw this. Well, I'll, I'll let you finish this, but then I'll, I'll bring it to where I'm going, which is what are the limits of how much you can oh, how, shrink how low, Yeah, how low, how low can, can we go? go but yeah, yeah, but, but keep yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say that in ge as two general points. One is that as a runner, one thing I know is that you will never, ever run fast relative to your abilities if you don't do interval training. Um. The second thing I would say is you probably won't run as fast as you could if you only do interval training. Now, some people do do only interval training, but that's usually they're doing it so slowly that it's not different from just doing a, a, a sustained thing. So to me, when you look at the studies, it's like, let's compare eight weeks of three interval workouts a week to eight weeks of three 45-minute sustained sessions. It's like, okay, that's interesting. It's, it's, it's useful to know, but I, I really don't think that's what is optimized and what we should be comparing it to is what, what about one short interval sprint interval session, one medium interval session and one 45 minute session that's, or, or, you know, yeah. some portfolio is uh, to me, cause there's pretty clear evidence that you get, you can get to the same or some of the same health outcomes. You can get the same improvement in insulin sensitivity, sensitivity say, but the mechanisms may be different if you, if you're doing a sprint interval session versus, or if you're doing sprint uh, interval training versus sustained training. And so it's like, well, if you've got two different mechanisms, let's hit them both. Because presumably we're, we're going to get a little, one plus one is going to be at least equal to, we you know, 1.2 or something like that. So I'm, I think interval, I would 100% recommend to, to anyone that they should be including some form of interval training in their uh, routine if they're interested in health or performance. I, I n wouldn't necessarily recommend it. it's the only thing unless they, that's what they want to do. I, I, would, I would put it as part of a portfolio. And as far as the sprint stuff goes, we we can talk about this, but it's like it it has been funny to watch the the uh, 
It's not like one upmanship, it's one downmanship. How short can we make this? Like, okay, I thought about interval training for a millisecond last night. Look, I got fitter. It's amazing. <laughs> well, that's only a, that's only a, a, a slight exaggeration from a study that came out recently from actually from, from here in UT Austin. Um, Ed Coyle, who is a, is a physiologist and, and published a study looking at four seconds all out, 56 <laughs> seconds of rest. So uh, it's on the every minute on the minute, but only four seconds all out. And this was done, I believe, for 15 minutes. And then they progressed to basically four seconds all out twice a minute. So you go four seconds all out, 26 seconds of rest, repeat, you know, for 20 minutes, something to that effect. Um, again, I, I, you know, here's my take on these things. It comes down to a concept you raised earlier, which is there's an opportunity cost to them. It, they're usually comparing that to doing nothing. And is that better than sitting on the couch? Yes. But if you gave a, if you gave me 40 minutes a day, could I come up with a more efficient way to get a benefit? I probably could. And then it becomes a question of, What's the efficacy versus effectiveness of this intervention? And I think that's the other piece of this, right? Which is, I think people like you and I like exercise so much that we get to focus all of our effort or interest on efficacy. What is actually going to do the best, produce the best results when adhered to perfectly? But I accept the fact that many people don't enjoy exercise and therefore the real world applicability of a problem becomes its effectiveness. It's not what can be done in a laboratory for six weeks when you're a paid subject. It's what are you going to be willing to do on your own when you have to rely on your own sprinkling of motivation dust day in and day out. And so I guess on some level, that's where I've become a little bit more accepting of the fact that, hey, if people are willing to do shorter interval workouts, provided they don't get injured, that's always the fear I have when people jump right into these high intensity interval workouts without any of the foundational strength that goes into it. Um, if the alternative is doing nothing, well, then it's better. But I guess secretly, I just hope that I can convince people that they're better off learning to love exercise, which again, I think is why a book like yours is so great, right? It explains like how we evolved and, you know, the, the more we can think about reconciling what we are uh, today with what we spent a million years becoming, uh, perhaps the less foreign that feels. So I, th I think you've put your finger on exactly the issue, which is it's, yeah, it's not about what does better in this lab context. It's, it's what will people do? And I actually... I'm a little bit skeptical that four seconds at the intensity that you have to do those intervals is more acceptable to the average person than, than let's say one minute. So going back to a little history of, on the HIT stuff, the, the first HIT protocol was Wingate tests, which is like 30 seconds all out. And anyone who's done a, a Wingate test, you know, if you do it in the lab, they're screaming at you. It's like, you know, we're going to shoot your mother if you don't go as hard as you can. And you get every, people puke after Wingate tests. So the, the, the original protocol was four Wingate tests with seven minutes rest, because that's how hard they are going back. It's like what we were saying earlier about how hard an 800 meter race, a two minute, two minute race can be compared to like a marathon. You can really suffer in those 30 seconds. And so when they're like, well, okay. It works in the lab, but in real life, what's, what are people going to do? Their answer initially wasn't like, we should make it shorter. It was, well, the intensity that people can actually get to in real life, we should. that's where the 60 second on, 60 second off protocol came from. Because it's like, it's easier for people to accept 60 seconds pretty hard than it is to expect them to imagine the you know homicidal drill surgeon behind them yelling at them to get all of it out of themselves in 30 seconds. Now you're going down to, let's say there's been 20 seconds, there's been 10 seconds, there's been four seconds. It takes, it, it's hard. It takes a lot of motivation. You have to be a hundred percent on to get the most out of this four second or 10 second or whatever interval. So there's a lot of uh, debate understandably about like, okay, well, which is it that people will do? Would they rather do 20 minutes at medium or, you know, 40 minutes easy or four seconds hard? I think there's a lot of debate because there's different there's a lot of different people. People like different things and some people are love that 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 power thing and that 
that's great. And and again, like like you said, it's I don't think it's as good as doing a mixed portfolio of things. Uh, um, but I think it's it's pretty good. And if they'll do it, that's great. But I I think the 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 assumption of this race to the bottom of how how short can you make the interval is that people like it more. And I'm not sure that's true for everyone. I love your comment about. I thought about in high intensity intervals for a second last night. <laughs> this podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit Peter Atia, MD dot com forward slash about where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies.